Hello, hello. I'm here again with you. I'm sure you have your pad and your Bible. We are going to look at Holy Following the Lord. You've had two weeks if you've been watching the streaming of this particular series, Precious Time at Noon. We talked about Abraham. We had to go back to the beginning looking at God's covenant with Abraham and God's promise to Abraham. But this promise, the fulfillment of this promise was really predicated upon their obedience. If they were going to appropriate the promise or receive the promise, they had to obey the Lord and trust the Lord. So today we're going to talk about what could possibly hinder a nation from receiving the promise. What could possibly hinder you from getting the things that God promised you? Well, he's not a liar. He's not a player. He's not going to deceive you. So it must be on our part. And I believe it's the sin of unbelief, the spirit of unbelief. I'm not talking about your moment or your, your intermittent challenges of, 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 of unbelief. You know, God, it looks so difficult, whatever. I'm talking about the sin of unbelief. So we're going to go with the scripture. Pastor um, Robin Edwards, my executive pastor at, at Beth Rapha, she's going to read the scripture, Hebrews 3:15 through 19. Here begins the reading of God's holy word. While it is said, today, if ye hear his voice, harden not your hearts, as in the provocation. For some, when they had heard, did provoke, howbeit not all that came out of Egypt by Moses. But with whom was he grieved forty years? Was it not with them that had sinned, whose carcasses fell in the wilderness? And to whom swear he that they should not enter into his rest, but to them that believed not? So, we see that they could not enter in because of unbelief. Because of unbelief. What is the sin of unbelief? That's what we're talking about today. It's really withholding your trust. So, it's a choice. You know, you don't just wake up in the morning and say, I don't believe. It is a matter of will. It's not happening to you. It's not a passive thing. It's an active thing. I choose not to trust you. We choose, choose not to believe God. The children of Israel chose not to believe God. It is a lack of belief in God and his provision. If one does not trust the person, system, or institution, they will not believe. They will not follow through. They will not embrace. They will not lean on. They will not expect fulfillment. That's what it means. It is the antithesis to faith. It's the opposite of faith. So the opposite of believing or having faith is unbelief, distrust. So let's look at examples of unbelief. The unbelief of many Israelites caused them not to enter the promised land. Hebrews 3 and 9 tells us that. It says that they did not enter the promised land. The original group who came out of Egypt. And it's interesting that they came out of Egypt, Pastor Robin, with a mighty hand. You know, mm -hmm. e even if people, a lot of, you know, smart people, very smart people, we call them theologians, mm -hmm. they, they say that it was, the Red Sea was really not a big sea, and, and so it's not really a big deal. But it is a big deal, because if you can get that many Jews, and then, of course, they fight over the number. Is it 6 million? Is it 6,000? Is it 600,000? It's a whole lot of people. They weren't just six people. So, and so if you say it's so just a little marsh, you know, a little marsh kind of, you know, small stream-like kind of situation, it's a miracle to get that many people crossing over with all the animals and the carts. And that's still a miracle wow. to bring them through that. So whether it was a big sea, small sea, we know they came through miraculously. Okay. And the miracle w w was... Fair and his horses got drawn into that little bit of water. So, you know, <laughs> what do you want? So whether you believe that it was like the Bible said, or you're an archaeologist, or you're a skeptic, mm -hmm. all those soldiers and fair as horses and chariots 
that drowned in a little bit of water. That's a miracle. Oh, wow. And they saw it. They crossed over. Remember Miriam got her tambourine and sang Moses' song. I will sing unto the Lord. He has triumphed gloriously. The horse and rider is thrown into the sea. The Lord my God, my strength, my song has now become what? My victory. So they were able to rejoice. They weren't rejoicing because nothing happened. Something must have happened. Slaves came out of bondage, crossed the Red Sea, and the oppressor drowned. I think that caused for celebration. Mm -hmm. Yet when they got to the promised land, because they heard their brethren, other people told them, they're giants in the land. And what you hear will make you fear. Wow, wow, wow. It depends on what you're listening to. Whoever you're listening to will cause you either to believe or to disbelieve. So they heard it. And, you know, when you hear something, your, your brain is like a computer. It creates images. Yes, so Im immediately they started, what, imagining these giants. haven't seen them yet, but they imagined them. And then they didn't only imagine their height or size. They imagined them hurting them. Wow. Didn't hurt them yet, mm. but they, they saw themselves being hurt. And that's how some of us live. We see ourselves in the car accident. We don't even have a license. Don't drive a car, but we see, you know. It's true. Can't get on the plane because we see the plane crash. Out of all the planes that fly, only your plane is going to crash. Can't believe God because your life is going to be the only life in all these people's lives around you that's going to end up with nothing. You know, spirit of doom, okay? So I, I just want you to understand right here that unbelief is a sin. Like, like fornication, like adultery, like stealing. Don't take it lightly. And then when you hang around with people who talk the same unbelieving language, oh, it's doomed. Have you ever heard people discourage you? Oh, yes. yes. What do they say? Well, you know, that's your way of thinking, or that's your thought, or well, I don't see it that way, or, you know, that kind of thing. I'm not, I don't know if it's really this way. So it's sometimes their own negative belief system. They, they, project, they project it project onto, onto you. you. And, you know, that stuff can bother you late at night. Oh, yes. In the midst of your situation. Exactly. It's one, one, one word. word can mess up your mind. You know, you're, used to, you're going along, you're preparing, you're trusting, and here comes unbelieving Sally. <laughs> Getting ready. I don't mean, your, if your name is Sally, don't get angry, but unbelieving ex. You know what I'm saying? Yes. Trying to pour that poison. It's poison. Wow. Now, let's see. We have, we, we have what we call reflections from Dr. J's Corner. So, after we have talked about this, we're going to always have a little reflection. Pastor Robin. I see. So let's see what we're going to reflect on within the context of this lesson. What promises from God are you sacrificing to your unbelief? In other words, God gave you a promise wow. and you're turning it over to unbelief. Not the devil now, you. Wow. What are your reasons for unbelief? Maybe you've never trusted anyone. Maybe you've trusted people and they've failed you. Maybe mother, father. It's always that. We always project that spirit to God. Daddy dropped me, so God is going to drop me. God does not look like Daddy. Right, right. And he does not look like Mommy. Or he doesn't look like a friend. Okay? Maybe it's the timing. Here's a biggie. He's not doing it yet. Another day and it's not done. So we are bent all out of shape. When God's timing has nothing to do with our timing. He doesn't have a clock in heaven. Doesn't have a calendar. Doesn't have a clock. Doesn't have uh, an iPod doesn't have a computer, doesn't have any kind of system of measuring time. A day to him is like a thousand years. My God. Okay? And then the last examination is examine how the sin of unbelief has compromised your work with God and repent. It means change your thinking. God is not a man that he should lie. And I pray for somebody right now. It's so hard to change your thinking if you are just stuck in it. You've always been an unbeliever, negative. Well, I know it, you know, God, is another day, it didn't happen. It always happened for everybody else but me. I'm the only one going through this. Everybody else seems to be making it. I'm just dropped here in this situation, and other people are enjoying their lives. And no, 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 no. You, you know what I'm saying? Stop it. Take a deep breath and change your thinking. That's what the word repent means. 
doesn't mean feel sorry. It means change your thinking. Put something in place right now. Get an accountability partner. Hear yourself talking that and stop yourself. And say to yourself, okay, it didn't happen today. Let me live my life until it happens. Remember that. See you tomorrow. Precious time at noon.